Welcome back. In sports, the FIFA Women's Under-20 World Cup preparation is now underway with stakeholders working together to see all requirements are met come the 15th of October. PNG Football Association President David Chung says he's confident of the preparations following the stakeholders' meeting recently. Paul Tomic Jr. reports. David Chung is now relaxed from last Saturday after the stakeholders' meeting, which has concluded that work is progressing well in terms of preparation for the hosting of the FIFA Women's Under-20s Soccer World Cup by PNG. After the last uh, stakeholders' meeting, uh, we managed to get uh, uh, Port Moresby Rugby League management uh, and assurance from them. We also managed to get from Curtin Brothers assurance and uh, so working closely with sports foundations, uh, Peter Samueli and the groups. Uh, we are not far away from uh, what we want. Uh, we were now compiling them together to meet our deadlines. He says this week he had a briefing with the Prime Minister, Peter O'Neill, who has made the commitment that it is the government's initiative and will ensure that game is delivered. Uh, asked me to at least report him at least once a week to give him a report. You know, for to follow up if there's any any needs for his office to give us the backing to ensure everything goes on schedules and and, uh, and timetable and so that we can host a memorable one. Yes. Chung further says FIFA and local organising committee have got a budget of 34 million kina for the operation cost for the 16 teams that will be participating in the FIFA Women's Under-20 Soccer World Cup includes the medical and security operations as well. Pultamic Jr., NBC National Sports. The PNG Rugby Football League is meeting all costs involved in hosting the Melanesian Cup Club Challenge in Port Mosby tonight. The first ever Melanesian Cup match between Fiji Vodafone champions, Sambeto Roosters, and Digicel Cup champions, Egmark Rabal Gurias, kick off at 7 o'clock at the Sejon Guy Stadium. PNG RFL Acting Chief Executive Officer Shane Morris in an exclusive interview with NBC National Sports said this would be a game of experience for both teams. Bradley Gregory with this story. Tonight's match will be a thriller between the champions from the local competition in Fiji and PNG. Experience is on the Guria side having played international fixtures against Australian clubs. But it will be a first for the Fijian champions. The door open, come through and play club in the champion club. We were PNG RFL Acting Chief Executive Officer Shane Morris said this match will be funded by PNG on an agreement the next will be met by Fiji. This, um, this competition um, was bought by the International Rugby League, but since uh, they've asked us to be the host. So this year we're the host of this competition, so the PNG RFL funds 100% of the bill. In 2016, that's F Fiji host us over there, and they fund 100% of the bill, so it's a, it's a, it's a combined partnership, so overall it's a 50%. So um, we put the game on, and we fit the bill, and in 2016, they fit the bill for flights, meals, accommodation, bus, transport, the whole lot of the game. So it's a, it's a working relationship which, which will put an MOU in place. Tonight's match will see Fiji's Sambeto Roosters playing for pride. It is Fiji's Independence Day. This, the Gurias respect. Gurias and Tomonese is your independence. Bradley Gregory, NBC National Sports. A charity golf event was held yesterday at the Royal Port Mosby Golf Course to raise funds for the Gateway Children's Fund. The event raised around 95,000 kina with more than 16,000 kina from auctioning of items. Paul Tomic Jr. reports. About 12 corporate teams participated in the charity golf event yesterday from the total of 16 teams that have confirmed to participate. Come on! 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 Come on!
and we'll start at 500 Kenny. Down the back, 500, thank you, sir. Who'll go to 600? 600 Kenny, Gary. 700 down the back. 700, who'll go to 800? 800, Gary, thank you. 800, who'll go to 900? The event was held at the Royal Port Mosby Golf Course. The charity event included auctioning of items given by sponsors and the two star players, Gary Ablett Jr. for the AFL and Australian basketball player, Jason Smith. I'm just glad that uh, I could come over and, and support you. Um, you know, it's only once a year, but um, you know, it's a, a special time for me. I, I brought my brother over uh, two years ago as well. He really enjoyed it and, and one of the young Gold Coast boys. So I'm hoping to continue to do that, bring some of the young guys over to support it. And um, yeah, we, uh, we really thank you for your support because without you guys, um, you know, uh, things, uh, things would be very difficult, so. Yeah, the work that you and the, the fund are doing is is, uh, is absolutely fantastic, but also um, a, a big thank you to everyone in the room that are contributing to the fund uh, and such a successful event, and uh, and be generous in the, uh, in the auction. Paul Tomic, Jr., NBC National Sports. The Southern Flames basketball team, with the support from Kutubu Security Services Limited, is staging a tournament this weekend at the Hohola basketball courts. Players have been put into respective teams to compete in this tournament. Paul Tomek Jr. has more. Kutubu Security Services Limited Southern Flames basketball team has come out with their tournament which is set for this weekend at the Hola basketball courts with eight men's team and six women's team. Uh, for the last two years, KSS has been the major uh, supporter of uh, basketball and uh, we've supported uh, Southern Flames uh, for two years now and uh, we thought that the season would start this year but unfortunately not so we decided to uh, Small competition for Flames. Franchise owner John Capinato said Flames is initiating this concept here so they are inviting all other PMBL players and youths or school students to come and join them for this off-season basketball cup. The management has decided that uh, let's start a little competition for them and uh, let them build on that until the uh, season starts uh, early in January. But uh, the uh, opportunity is open to uh, you know, young potential uh, students who are in basketball or PMBM players. The presentation saw the men's champion team's trophy presented to the Southern Flames president, Kevin Teme, and other trophies shown by men and women's players to be presented comes December when the finals will be held. President Kevin Teme is thankful for his team's franchise coming out with this basketball tournament as well as his Southern Flames captain, Charles Parapa. John Capinato and Vonny, who has been the cornerstone of sports, not only basketball, but in soccer, rugby league, all the sports, including other social organizations that are in here for the betterment of the youth of the country, they come in to support. Paul Tomic Jr., NBC National Sports. Wallabies coach Michael Chaker says he expects this weekend's encounter with Wallabies to be the most brutal match Australia has faced in the World Cup yet. Both sides are guaranteed quarter-finalists, but this final pool match may prove crucial to either side's chances of progressing to the final. The teams meet here at the weekend at Twickenham and not fighting it out for the right to go to the knockout stage. That much we know, Australia and Wales are assured of a quarter-final berth, but the loser will be set on a path of meeting South Africa and possibly New Zealand. The winner takes on a much easier path, potentially, to the final, if they get that far, of course. Michael Checker, the Australian coach, is thinking of none of that. He says, as he said, every week it's just one game at a time. What he says about this match, though, versus Wales, is it'll be the toughest till now for the Wallabies. Taking it day by day and is a good thing for us. Like, we need to learn, learn more about believing in ourselves. Like I said, the team's got a long way to go around you know, believing in itself and, and, uh, and its capabilities and being consistent then so we can transition and, and like I said, lay some good foundations going forward. But um, all that uh, for the moment is just a background to getting ready for Saturday, which will be, you know, I feel the most brutal game we're going to encounter in the pool because it's been physical so far, but I think it goes... If my, I've only got some knowledge of tournament play, but my knowledge of tournament play tells me that 
the further on it goes, the more brutal it gets, you know, because the stakes get higher and everyone wants to win more. The Wallabies had their eve of match training here and were pumping out Akadaka again. Thunderstruck was echoing around the stadium. There have been a few changes made to the side. Sean McMahon is in for the suspended Michael Cooper. Drew Mitchell will be in for the injured Rob Horn and Dean Murray is in for Rob Simmons. Matt Gitto and Israel Folau have both been cleared to play after their injury tests. Folau says he'll be ready to play. It's not 100%, but I mean, um, you know, it, it, for me, I'm, I'm confident. You know, otherwise I wouldn't be uh, strapping on the boots and and, um, and going out there tomorrow. So um, things like that. You know, I'm, I'm sure every every player throughout the tournament gets the little uh, niggly injuries. You know, you got to try and um, you know overcome it as best you can. But I'm, I'm definitely um, going into the game tomorrow. And uh, Evelyn, that would have been Wallabies and Wales. That's just about all I have in sports for the for the night. It's, uh, something for our sporting fanatics to look at. Thanks, Douglas. Uh, stay with us on NBC National News. We'll be back after this break. <laughs>